everybody. Um, today I wanted to go through the flexor withdrawal reflex um, and also differentiate that between uh, the reflex involved with nociceptive pain. Now the flexor withdrawal reflex uh, is a reflex obviously uh, and the reason why it is a reflex is because when you stimulate the undersurface of the paw or between the toes and you elicit that reflex it travels up to the spinal cord and it goes straight down. There's no uh, moving up the spinal cord into the brain for processing. So the reason why the reflex exists is for uh, dogs or humans uh, or other animals to quickly retract from uh, danger, I suppose you could say, without having to process it and think about it too much. Um, so with the dog, um, what happens is when you elicit it, the dog goes into uh, stifle flexion and hip flexion to draw the limb up and away. Um, the spinal segments for this is usually sort of L6 to S1, so we're looking more at the sciatic nerve. Um, so let's get into it and look at what that looks like. Now she's quite sensitive. What I recommend you do is go slow, um, just so we ease your tension in between the toes to try to get the reflex to happen. Don't go too hard too fast. So try to get this, the hip and the, the leg into a nice neutral position. All I'm going to do with pain is go between the toes. Um, and you're just gonna go up, and there it goes there. Good girl. That was probably a little bit too, too hard. She started licking uh, her mouth, which meant that she's feeling a little bit of pain. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna to try to get her to uh, withdraw away from me and up it goes like that. Good girl. Now, uh, the reason why that is important and why we have to differentiate it between nociceptive pain is that nociceptive pain travels actually up to the brain. They feel a noxious stimulus into their, whatever it is that you're testing, like the bottom of the paw. It goes up to the spinal cord into the dorsal horn, crosses over, travels up to the spinal cord to the brain for processing. Now, um, if you're trying to elicit that, again, go very slow, but you're looking for different signs and symptoms. So yes, they'll withdraw away, very similar to the withdrawal reflex, but you will also get a pain sign and symptom as well. That might be a curling of the lip, it might be turning and looking around at you, um, flinching, yelping, all those classic pain signals. Um, now with Paige, I'm gonna go very slow. <laughs> it doesn't need much. Some people use the little pincers. She will go through the roof if I use that on her. Um, with Paige, I'm actually going to go more towards the nail bed and I'm not going to use uh, much force at all. So, three, two, and one. No, I didn't quite get it that time. And you saw the licking of the lips there. Um, I'm surprised she didn't do the greyhound scream of death with me because she, yeah, we're talking about you um because she she is very sensitive let's just try one more time three two one and the looking and the widening of the eyes so she can feel that she's letting me know that it's painful um so why is it important that we kind of differentiate the two so with the flexor withdrawal reflex being sort of more localized to the l6 s1 segment and the sciatic nerve if the reflex was absent, we're either thinking that the sciatic nerve is affected, if it's unilateral, or maybe there is an issue at that level in the spinal cord if it's looking more bilateral. Um, if the reflex is extremely exaggerated, we're probably thinking higher than say like the L4 level. So there might be a, a lesion to the spinal cord or something up higher than the lumbar sacral plexus. Um, in contrast, deep pain, so the nociceptive um, noxious stimuli reflex. Um, if we were thinking about a dog that had IVDD and it had the worst grade possible, like a grade five, 
um, between say T3 and L3 um, and deep pain was affected, they wouldn't have the pain response when we're doing um, that uh, noxious stimuli down there. But the flexor withdrawal reflex will most likely be intact and if, it might even be a little bit exaggerated. So you can have one without the other and it's important that we try to look for the signs and symptoms to properly assess both because that gives us clues as to uh, what's going on up a little bit higher. Um, whether we're sort of looking at an upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor, no, lower motor neuron lesion. Uh, so I hope that's really helpful. Um, it took me a little bit to get my head around too, but um, uh, try to do it in lateral recumbency if you can. Always compare to the other side. And if you're doing the noxious stimuli, just go slow. Don't go too hard to start with. Otherwise, you're going to make your dogs a bit sore and very grumpy with you. All right. Thanks for watching.